All right, let's just jump straight into it. I went ahead and set the gaskets on there to see how they matched up. I already have the heads cleaned up, all the gasket material off, and I have the block cleaned off too. And I just kind of mocked it up to see how, how they were going to lay down. And actually, it's almost a perfect match. The gasket matches the heads are almost perfect, and they also match the intake really good as well. So there's no need for no gasket matching or anything like that. Okay, so these are 487 casting heads. They have 194 valves and 150 for exhaust. And they have 75 cc chambers. They're, they may not be the best heads out there, but I think they're pretty good. I actually looked down the intake ports and they look pretty clean. They almost look like aftermarket heads. I've seen other heads that have more like obstructions and, and casting stuff inside the, the ports. So these actually look pretty good. The ports are pretty small, so I, I guess they're going to be limited in power, but but whatever. Okay, so these gases have those little pins that kind of stick into the block, and the block has holes for them. If it didn't have those, I would just run a silicone uh, bead or RTV bead and, and just not even put the rubber gaskets in there because they do like to slide around. But since these have the little pins to hold it in place, I'm going to go ahead and put RTV on the bottom and top because it helps hold the intake gaskets in place. Here's my intake. Notice how clean it is. I cleaned, I scraped off every uh, last bit of gasket material. And it's always best to use kind of a, maybe like a dull scraper you, you would say. That way you don't cut into the aluminum. When applying the gasket maker it's best to leave a pretty good sized blob on each corner because that's where they like to leak at. After I do that I'm going to go ahead and run about a quarter inch bead across the top. I kind of mess it up so I smooth it around with my hands a little bit but either way it'll be alright. Look at that precision bead that I'm laying down. <laughs> I'm just playing. I actually mess it up. Alright so now I'm just going to lay down the little rubber gasket and make sure the little pins go inside the holes in the block. Get a little pat down and then move on to the next step. And the next step is to of course do the back side of it. I'm about to lay down another precision bead across the top of the block. Put some blobs on each corner and then move on to put in the intake gaskets on. Okay so I jumped ahead of myself. I still got to put down this little rubber gasket. Let's go ahead and just poke it down, make sure the little pins are in the little holes, pat it down a little bit. I put two more uh, blobs on each corner on the top, right there where the gasket sits on top of it. I do the same thing to the back side, just two blobs on the corner, because that's where they like to leak at. And now I carefully set the intake gaskets into each little groove where they go, set it down. And of course put the other side in place. Before moving any further I'm going to go ahead and remove the valve covers. That way they don't interfere with me setting down the intake. And after I have those off I'm going to go ahead and put four more uh, little blobs on each corner. Right there where the intake, mat, uh, intake gasket sits on top of these little rubber gaskets. Okay so there goes my little blobs. After I do this then I'm going to go ahead and run another bead on across the top of the rubber gasket. Here goes another precision bead. Alright, it's not that precision. I just kind of wipe it around a little bit, but as long as it gets kind of even coverage, you'll be alright. And of course, do the same to the back side, put the little blobs, and then run a, a nice precision bead across the back. Alright, so now that all that's down, uh, it's time to go ahead and set the intake on. It's best to set this down as straight as possible, so just be real careful. It really helps out that this is a lightweight aluminum intake. So I'm just going to be real careful, set it straight down. I'm looking down the bolt holes to make sure they align. And then I set it in place. Okay, so now I'm going to put the intake bolts in. Notice how I could pretty much finger tighten them in without really moving the intake around that much. That's how you know it went down straight. It's really important to set the intake manifold down straight and not move it around because that just leads to problems. You might start having a, a leaky intake or something if you move it around too much. So far this project is moving along pretty nice. The only thing that I would have done different is, it might be hard to tell in the video, but I, I have some really old ugly bolts that are rusty and stuff like that. 
it would have been a lot nicer job if I would have just went ahead and bought like a set of stainless steel bolts. You know, what's the point of putting on such a pretty intake if you use ugly bolts? Alright, so the instructions on the RTV says to just finger tight everything and let it sit for an hour and then torque the spec. So right here I'm just going to go around the perimeter and, and tighten all the bolts a little bit. Just kind of snug them down. Okay, so after waiting at least one hour, it's time to go ahead and torque them with spec. I made this little a torque sequence diagram and the torque spec is 25 foot-pounds. Okay, so just follow the torque sequence. I'll start out in the middle. And I'm using a wrench because I can't really get an extension on these middle bolts. I think you could use a crow foot and extension on a torque wrench to do this properly, but I mean, I've done enough of these where I, I know how tight to make them. If you do use a crow foot on a torque wrench, I believe there's some kind of formula where you have to calculate the extra leverage because of the little extra length of the tor or the crow's foot. But either way, I'm not trying to get into that. Okay, so I'm going to finish up by tightening the last two on the torque sequence. And the torque spec is 25 foot-pounds. Okay, so now that the intake manifold is already torqued down, it's time to install the distributor. What I've learned is that when you install one of these, it spins clockwise. And if you drop it in down into the, the, the groove where it drops all the way down and the rotor's pointing after where it needs to be, you can never skip it back a notch. So I'm going to go ahead and take my priming tool and I'm going to turn the oil pump in a position to where the distributor is going to drop down right before where, uh, right before where it needs to be and then you could always skip it forward one notch at a time. I have no idea why it works like that, but that's just what happens. Oh yeah, and don't forget to install the little uh, gasket that goes right there on the distributor. Okay, so I'm gonna drop it back in, and it's gonna take me a little bit, but I'm gonna keep wiggling it, and you have to wiggle it to where it drops all the way down and it's pointed back at number one cylinder where you took where you took it out from assuming that you disassembled it properly and you set the engine at top dead center before you disassembled it okay so once you get it down make sure that it's seated all the way down and install the locking the little uh, locking tab the hold down and that's very important because the distributor is what turns the oil pump so you gotta make sure you have that tightened down before you try to start the engine or anything like that Okay, let's say the engine wasn't set up properly before you disassembled it or you just lost track of it. That's okay, you can still set the distributor up the same way, but first you need to make sure the engine is on top dead center on the compression stroke. And if you don't know how to do that, I have a video on how to, on how to set it up, and I'll make sure that I'll leave that on the end screen, that way you guys can find it. Okay, so it finally fell in place. And this is kind of unnecessary, but you could take a straight edge and put it at the center of the rotor, at the point of the rotor, and it should line right up with number one cylinder. Okay, so now we can move on to locking down the distributor with the little locking tab or hold down or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so here's the locking tab. Uh, I have a pretty long bolt, but that's because this Edelbrock manifold has a pretty deep hole. And it's a little hard to get that in there, but once you get it in, you can go ahead and tighten it down. You might have to loosen it later to adjust the timing, but it's a good idea to go ahead and tighten this down pretty good so that way the distributor can't move. Just make sure your bolt has plenty of thread engagement without bottoming out. Go ahead and tighten it down. Using a 9 16 wrench, go ahead and tighten this down. And I'm going to have to end this video right now because I ran into a lot of other problems with the water neck not fitting right and the fuel line not fitting right and the alternator bracket not fitting right. And then also, I went ahead and started the truck. It started right up, but the accelerator pump on this carburetor doesn't work just like the last one, which is pretty lame. But whatever, uh, I guess my next video is going to be making a video on rebuilding a, a Edelbrock or... Or actually, it's a Carter 600 AFB. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please like and subscribe.